Hello, this is C4D Freak from the cafe, and uh, it's my first tutorial. Tutorial, so bear with me. I'm going to teach you guys what I learned about feathers. Um, so let's make one. I'm going to start off with a B spline. I'm going to go into the right view, and I'm going to create a quill. Okay. I know it's a lot of points, but it taken you get your rectangle selection tool and you can adjust them however you want it to look nice and curved. Be like an ostrich feather or something. not real critical but however you want it to look so we're gonna grab a sweep and we're gonna grab another circle spline make sure it's on XY or it's gonna be a an issue <laughs> alright so uh, make the circle a child of the sweeps and bring the spline up and now you have this great big giant snail shell which is not what we're looking for but uh, give you an idea of what we're going to do here is I'm going to change the uh, diameter of the spline to around 5 now we know a bird feather is not going to look like that so we'll go into the sweep nerves and we'll do the end scale and we'll make it around 5 so to go from thick to thin now you've got this this spline um, to attach a feather to, but you don't. You need to create a copy of the spline. So click the spline and control drag down and oops, click the spline, control drag, and get yourself a copy. This is what would attach the feather object to. So we'll go into here, grab a feather object, bring our feather object down here, and make it a child of make the spline a child of the copy spline a child of the feather object so now you can see the splines attached to the copy spline okay now there's a lot of things to uh, consider when we're doing this so I'll probably have to break this up into several parts so we go into the feather object, you'll notice that there's lots of different settings in shape and object. If you select them together, it's good because it's easy to work with. Now generation, basically you can view them as splines or hairs. Okay? And the segments are just like hairs, wouldn't determine how the actual each barb of the feather would look if you want it to look faceted or you know like really kinky then you would have low segments um, I want this to look fluffy so we're gonna have a lot of segments and if you do dynamics on it you know make it look like somebody's riding with it or it's on a bird moving um, your segment count would be higher so 20 to 27 26 whatever will be fine we'll just go in the middle to 24 so there's our segments. Uh, spacing. Uh, this is where it's going to give you length of each barb and spacing between the barbs. Um, barb spacing zero will give you the fullest feather. Um, but point four is where we'll start right here. Barb length. If you look at what happens when you uh, increase your length of the barb. So we'll make ours say 110 okay and we're going to give some variation in it and the variation changes the length a little bit of each one of the barbs in relationship to each other um, so we'll give a little bit of uh, variation to it say like two uh, meters and 
we're going to give 0.5 variation to the barb spacing. And now if you look closer at the feather, you can see that um, the ends of it, they're not at the same length, and there's some variation in the spacing. Okay, that's what we want to do. Now the next thing we'll move to is the uh, displacement. And what the displacement does is it talks, it does the curves, how the actual barb itself curves you know if it curves this way or curves this way curves you know however the curve you want it to be will be determined right here by these settings um, but before we do those we'll go down into the curve itself and we'll generate a curve on a line um, basically first thing you want to do is go in and change the uh, tension you want to bring it down to zero if you don't your curves in the graph will be really uh, they won't be nice lazy curves they'll be really straightforward and if you look at what's happened to the feather when we bring these curves up basically you want this to be a mirror for both sides Oop. you can go in and change the numbers to be exactly the same but uh, there's no need to really just so it can be a tutorial for a feather object. So now that we have got that done, we'll go into the uh, displacement settings. And the top curve will, you know, make it around 60. And you can see how that changed the curves of the feather and we want it to look really fluffy so we want to give it some curves and some spacing so that's all we're doing is give it some randomness um, the curve base we're going to make around 30 to 35 let's go there 35 see how it really put some curve in it there and the displacement we'll bring it up to around 25 and we're going to give some variation in it about point three, point four, something like that. Okay. Now you can see the feather is like kind of fluffy looking. <laughs> I know it's hard to tell with this black monitor, black and white. I haven't figured out how to change the display of what it's going to be. So now we'll go back into the spacing. And in the spacing, what we want to do is look at some of these things so like the rackish radius if you wanted to separate the the uh, feather from the spline at the bottom you would you know change the, the rackish radius or the top radius would do it at the tip you know if you wanted to for some reason separate it from the spline so we don't want to do that but that's what that's for um, the start and the end is the same as with the spline uh, the end of the spline is here and the start is here so if you want your barbs to start closer you would start it at zero or you could give yourself some you know length in there to build the pin surface so we'll give it say like 13 and again at the end if you wanted it to uh, not go all the way to the end you could manipulate the barbs where they start and where they end but in this one we want it to uh, go all the way to the end um, and the barb length is exactly what it says you know we, we decided we want to do around a hundred or I decided I want to do about a hundred okay so we've got that and we'll move to the next set of settings which are going to be the rotation settings the rot rotation what it does is it'll make it like a complete twist like you was going to build like a bottle brush or something you know so you could see how it's all twisted up 
if you wanted to build some type of feather like that. It doesn't take a lot. Two degrees, one degree, it's still a spiral, so 0 0.5, 0 0.2 kind of gives you a curve. We you can get some really weird angles, but we're not going to use that particular one um, at all. What, what we will do is um, maybe we'll give it a little bit, let's say 0.5. No, it's just too much. Rotation down here, so give it 0.7. What this rotation is, uh, there's rotations on the actual barbs themselves, and you can see how they will be lifting up. We want to break up the flat plane that they all sit on, and so we're going to give it 0 0.5, 0 0.7, something like that. And um, you can control like variation so it doesn't say symmetrical, you know, they go up and down a little bit. And uh, so our rotation of the barb itself is can you know controlled right here. So you can rotate all the barbs if you wanted to build feathers that overlap each other or something like that. You could move that rotation. Um, so. I'm not going to do much on the rotation, but this just gives you some idea what you could do with with the feather itself and the gaps. Um, we could do you know 30 to 40, and this will break up the feather variation. Let's see here. We we'll want the gaps to occur after you set the the gaps themselves, how far apart you want it. You have to set the occurrence, like how often do you want it to to happen during on the length. So, 20% of the time we want it to uh, occur. So if it breaks it up, one, two, three, four, and five, which would be 20% segments on the full length, and then you can vary it as well. So if you did five or ten or twenty. But we don't really need any variation. We just need a little bit of gap in the feather, so it just doesn't look like it's all just made that way. Now we're going to go into shape. First thing you want to do is again drop your tensions to zero before you get started with your shapes. And um, basically, we want the shape of the feather to kind of taper at the tip so we want it to taper off we want it to be kind of wide and come up here and curve out and then come up here and curve out so you can control the shapes of the left and the right side this you know equals the left and this equals the right so we'll just start by dragging this down let me pull this over so you can see what's happening Okay, so we'll drag this down and come in here, make a point, and we'll make it come back out again. And make another point and make it come up. Oh, make control Z. Make that come up. And I want this to come down because I want it to be pointed at the tip. But I want it to have a nice curve, so we'll grab this and make a nice curve. So you can kind of see what we did there. Because that controls that side. And with this side, which represents that side of the feather, we want to kind of don't we don't want to do a mirror, but we want to do a um kind of like an opposite shape. We want to start out there, but we want to bring our curve down and back out. I don't know. And 
so we'll make another point here and we'll bring this up so it's pointed at the top and we'll bring a point here and kind of mirror the top curve so we'll bring this over a little bit and I want to bring the curve down here a little bit to see what it's looking like on this side yeah I want to bring the curve out a little bit here okay now it's starting to look like a feather okay well I'll stop it here and we'll do the materials uh, application and adjustments on the next video.